Rod Rosenstein, testifying today, uh, denied ever suggesting that he would wear a wire and secretly wiretap President Trump in the White House in a plot to remove the president under the 25th Amendment. Did you suggest or hint at secretly recording President Trump? I did not suggest yes or, no? or hint at secretly recording President Trump. I, uh, have you have you ever discussed with anyone the possibility of invoking the 25th Amendment to remove this president from office? I have never uh, in any way suggested that the president should be removed from office under the 25th Amendment. And I can give you a more detailed explanation if you have time. But after the New York Times had broken the story in September of 2018 that Rosenstein did indeed suggest he would wear a wire Justice Department officials said he did, but did so only sarcastically, facetiously, you know, fun and games. The Times reported, quote, a Justice Department spokeswoman also provided a statement from a person who was present when Mr. Rosenstein proposed wearing a wire. The person who would not be named acknowledged the remark, but said Mr. Rosenstein made it sarcastically, end quote. Less than a month after the Times had broken that story, former FBI general counsel James Baker was on Capitol Hill, where under oath, Baker said this, quote, on our side of the street, we thought it was serious. So my recollection is, yeah, it was. We were stunned and surprised. I don't think people laughed it off as a joke, end quote. Well, someone is lying, don't believe many of them are laughing right now. The question is, will we find out who is lying? Joining us tonight is Congressman Andy Biggs. He's the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, and uh, he is also on the uh, Science, Space, and Technology Committee, and uh, that makes you a big deal in my view because I'm a big fan of what uh, we are watching America do in space now. Uh, I want to I stay with the issue of uh, uh, obviously, Rosenstein and the testimony today, but this is a great time for America to be back uh, launching our astronauts uh, into space and returning them to the space station on, on American launch vehicles. So it's a, a wonderful moment. I want to I offer you the opportunity to comment on it if you would like. Yes, Lou, I mean, it's about time, and, uh, and, I, and I give full credit to Jim Bridenstine, who's working so hard at this, but I mean, visionaries like Musk, uh, who I disagree with on other issues, but certainly this uh, partnership is fantastic, and I'm grateful to see America trying to reassert itself in the space program. Uh, for too long, we've, we've kind of given up on that program, and it's, it is really critical. We get so much science and technology development from that program, it is important that we be a leader there. It's a good time. It is a Absolutely. good time. Absolutely. And speaking of leaders, President Trump deserves immense credit uh, for being bold enough yep. to say point blank, uh, we're on our way not only to the moon, uh, but Mars and funding, funding the agency that had been uh, uh, deprived uh, for th under two presidents, uh, in my opinion, shamelessly so. Uh, but this is a good news story and we don't want to go over the rascals who are responsible for our uh, our uh, pause in the space program. Uh, no pause yep. in the Rosenstein testimony today. Uh, he was, uh, I, I think, perhaps taken aback at various points by some close questioning by uh, the chairman, uh, Lindsey Graham. No surprise there. But then uh, Maisie Hirono, Senator Hirono, going right after him on whether or not he was serious about that wire. I mean, that surprised me. How about you? Well, the source surprised me, and uh, with the strength that she came at it, surprised me a bit. But uh, I expected him to answer just like, as he did, uh, because, you know, Lou, you and I have been following this for a long time, and uh, I, there's just not a, a whole lot of trust that we can have in any of those folks, is there? Because, I mean, he says, oh, I was just joking, or he basically denied today that, that he had ever said anything like that. But there's all kinds of sources that mm -hmm. contradict that. Uh, you got people saying he's a liar, but he's, uh, you know, but people who are saying that, Andy McKay being one of them, he's a confessed liar. He's a proven liar. So it's a, it's a total mess going on there, but it all points to one thing. 
This was an orchestrated conspiratorial coup attempt by Rod Rosenstein, James Comey, Clapper, Brennan, Strzok, Page, and Andy McCabe. They were, they were the ringleaders pushing this thing around. And they had a lot of help on Capitol Hill from radical Dems, too, and the deep state uh, throughout the executive branch. Uh, this, is, this is straightforward. Uh, he, and and uh, Attorney General William Barr uh, seems to be pushing this toward a conclusion. But whether it's going to be a conclusion that is satisfying or appropriately uh, uh, holding uh, these uh, sordid officials who are politically corrupt uh, accountable, uh, we'll see. But uh, we have high hopes. How about you? Yeah, I, I can't remain optimistic on that. But I tell you what, as time goes by, I get a little bit less so. And I get constituents who call me every week still saying, when will justice be done here? I mean, we're, we're, Lou, we're not talking about people just sitting around telling jokes. We're talking about people opening an, up investigations, manipulating the FISA process. We're talking about mm -hmm. real acts that we have real evidence for and nothing's happened to them. And you and I both would be going to jail. We'd be probably sitting, uh, sitting in jail in an orange uh, jumpsuit right now if we had done the same thing. And you were part of the, uh, had a uh, amicus brief. You're uh, part of the Sullivan case uh, and General Flynn. Uh, it's become the Sullivan case with his uh, outrageous conduct and decisions. Uh, when do you expect resolution and what kind of resolution do you expect? Well, I'm hoping that uh, the appellate court is, is going to smack him down for his kind of uh, digging in and, take, and taking his position to the nth degree. And I think that I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we'll get a uh, decision sooner rather than later. This is highly unusual, quite frankly, that a judge would not capitulate to uh, the appellate court and to the, uh, the prosecutor who wants the case dismissed. Mm -hmm. And uh, for him to dig his heels in is just absolutely, uh, frankly, it's unprecedented in, in, uh, in my time. Uh, and, and unprecedented, I think, in any time, because uh, the Department of yeah. Justice has reasserted itself here, not only uh, with a motion to dismiss, but coming back uh, with all guns blazing. Yeah. Uh, it, it is good to see them demanding uh, the nonsense by Judge Emmett Sullivan uh, uh, end uh, and, the, and, and put these, the rights of General Flynn, who has been framed and uh, tortured uh, in, the, in the prosecution uh, system, uh, whether by the FBI, uh, whether by special counsel, uh, you name it, for three years. So it is a, a, a wonderful conclusion. You get the last word here. Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, Sydney Powell, thank, thank God for her. She's done a great job. Uh, uh, Tom Fitton, you, Lou, these people have done a great job pushing this thing because General Flynn really was... Uh, uh, this was an orchestrated setup against General Flynn, and that is also unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've seen so much uh, that we've got to put an end to, Lou, and justice has got to come through. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, President Obama uh, has uh, you know, much to answer for uh, because yes. of the role of his intelligence chiefs and the corrupt, politically corrupt FBI and Department of Justice. Uh, we thank you so much. Andy Biggs, Congressman, we appreciate it.